say my name. I am awake. I am the danger. I am the one who knocks. Welcome to the next episode of Breaking In to Breaking Bad with Clifford and Caleb Humphrey. Today we are discussing Season 3, Episode 3, I-F-T. So, Cave, there's there's no way of knowing what those letters stand for. You know, of course, we're just going to oh, have to... Abso- just gonna have to absolutely guess not. Here. I would have... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, wild guess. I feel tired. My... Um, any any ideas could be anything, but what do you think? Could be anything. I mean, it could be any type of last sentence of the episode. Something to do right. with Beneke, maybe. I don't know. That's just a shot in the dark. With Ted, might have something to do with Ted. Yep. Maybe Skyler and Ted, perhaps. Yeah, perhaps. but um, yeah, you know, that's a theory. That's just like your opinion, man. So. <laughs> But uh, anyway, yeah, okay. I, I don't know if there's much to say about the title just because we want to, yeah. So IFT, you, um, you know, you, you, you're, the audience is welcome to their own interpretation. But let's, why don't you let's, give a recap of the uh, of the episode so people that didn't, you know, watch what, Cape? That's a great might. idea. That's a great idea. Let me let me just do that. Okay, so in this episode, the basic things that happen are. Uh, Walt comes back to the house, much to Skylar's chagrin, and there's a bit of a poker match dynamic between them as they uh, Walt is betting that she's not going to tell the cops about his meth manufacturing. And so that's the leverage that she held over him to say, you know, give me a divorce and get out of here. And since he is calling her bluff on that, uh, that's what happens in this in this episode. The other thing that happens is Jesse kind of implodes emotionally into this really kind of pathetic um, grieving of uh, of Jane, where he's just constantly calling her voicemail box to hear her voice. It's 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 actually really sad. Very sad. And then and then Hank might be the uh, only other part of this. Uh, this episode where, where Hank learns that he's going to get to go back to El Paso, which is kind of a big deal, but he's showing signs of some kind of emotional instability. And we're not really sure what's going on, but there's some disturbing things. And then we also see some behind the scenes work, some behind the scenes finagling between the, uh, between Gus Frayne and the Salamanca brothers and the whole family there. And we, we, we're we made aware that there's some big dealings going on in the background. So that's the, that's the episode. We've already discussed the title. Let's jump, let's jump right into it. Let's do it. Okay. The introduction, the introduction is we learn how Mr. Tortuga came to his end. And it was, you know, it was an interesting scene there in the Hacienda in Mexico, and uh, we were learning that, you know, he was very self-assured. Uh, he thought he had everything. He knew where he, that he was going to be able to pull this off, where he was getting paid by the feds to tip off, you know, the, the cartel, and the cartel wouldn't find out. But the cartel has a way of always finding out. And the they particular... Do. Yeah. And the particular death that he met was by beheading and we learned that it was by the two Mexican brothers and we're reminded that they showed up to Walt's house with an ax. And so likely they were just going to cut his head off too. And uh, I don't know what else to make of the introduction other than to be reminded that the cartel is very brutal and dangerous and violent and they do this kind of a thing. And they're, you know, Walt is, is playing the fire. And the, one of the, First, first scenes after the introduction is Mike on the phone with somebody connected to Gus, maybe Gus. And he says, I don't think Saul needs to know exactly how close Walt came to getting killed. Well, so why, why did they 
show us that scene with Mike calling. What's your thought on that? Well, it was it was interesting to see because up to this point, you always thought that Mike worked for Saul and that he had an acquaintance that that uh, worked for for Gus. But at this point, it, it, it appears that he views Gus as more of a boss and Saul more as a business partner that they do work with from time to time, more of like a con on a contract basis. Um, Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Mike is still a new character to us. We don't really know much about him. So, but we did, we did kind of jump to the conclusion that he was a full-time employee or something of, of Saul's and that he just did this all the time. But anyway, okay. Well, so, so Gus, then learns that the Salamanca brothers tried to kill his primary manufacturer of methamphetamine. And so he's the one who obviously calls the brothers off or has someone call the brothers off from killing Walt. It's all kind of, we're kind of backfilling here a little bit as something, things kind of become clear. And there's the scene between Gus and the Salamancas and they say, look, uh, you know, Mr. Frayne, this Walt guy killed Tuco or had Tuco, you know, killed. He's responsible for that. And therefore, justice requires that we kill him. And we're going to need you. Blood to- for blood. Blood for blood. That's right. And, and, and Gus says, listen, I understand that dynamic very much, but you got to know that I'm in business with him and I have certain contractual obligations that have to be fulfilled. And once those are fulfilled, you are free to exact your pound of flesh as you like right. but uh so that's that's revealing because on one hand wait gus actually doesn't have any business obligations with walt it shows he's very confident that walt is going to come back and take up the deal that he laid out in the previous episode to go and work for three months and make three million dollars right and we also see a little bit of how cold Gus is. Yeah. He's like, yes, that was, that, that was a big part because up to this moment, we just thought he was this stand up professional drug dealer, but but very good and plays by the rules and is very, you know, like would never backstab and all this stuff. And here we say (laughs) to the cartel, like, Hey, I just need him for a little bit of time. And then you could, you know, have your way with him. you know, bring him, bring the ax, bring the nachos, whatever. Yeah, that's right. Um, and that that part was that was it was telling because it's like okay, so there there's some there's another side to this Gus character that we're starting to learn more. Like maybe he's not as as right, you know, clean or he's he's more ruthless than it, it appears yeah. at least. Yeah, I think that the vision of him we're meant to kind of have as a default is that his primary identity is manager of the Pollo Hermano you know, chains of restaurants. Right. And then he does this on the side. <laughs> and, yeah. when, and, and when he's doing this thing on the side, he's very much like his manager persona in that. But what we come to realize is that, no, 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 <laughs> the Poyos Hermanos is the side thing. His primary <laughs> identity is this, you know, drug lord. And when he's got his how was your meal? Can I help you with anything? You know, would you like a refill? Like that's a fake. That's not the real Gus frame, you know, or that's, that right. may be the real Gus frame, but it's, it's a smaller part of him. The, the more dominant side is, is his ruthlessness, which we see here. And I have no doubt that he would hold his contractual duties all the way. He would pay Walt the $3 million. And then as soon as he walked out the door, he would give the okay to kill him. In other words, he wouldn't say, you know, um, I'm going to pay him tomorrow. It's his last day. Why don't you come in, kill him, and then I'll keep my $3 million. Like, Yeah. We're starting still to stand up in that sense. He's a still, he's still a stand up because he tells himself somehow that he's just a businessman and that he's very good as a businessman insofar as he's only providing goods and services and he always fulfills his obligations. And that's why when the Salamanca brothers come to him, he says, look, my hands are tied. I, I can't let you come into my territory and kill him because I have this obligation to him. I just, I just can't do it. I'd love to, but I just, I just can't do it. 
So right, and at, that, at the end of that conversation yeah. is that's when they he he basically says like, "Hurry up with this." Uh, what, what's his name? Uh, Juan Bolsta. That's the guy that was the you know the the next Capitan in in the cartel that was talking to Gus. That was like he was basically like, "Listen, I'll tell the Salamanca brothers to chill for a little bit." But I don't know how long they're going to listen. And so if you want to stay in good graces with the cartel, you know, hurry this up and then allow this to happen. Yeah. Salamanca brothers, you know, they're like the tide. You can't control them. They will. They're going to do what they do, you know. Yep. That's true. Okay, well, all right. So let's let's shift to um, to Skylar and Walt. So Skylar comes home. She sees Walt's car. She calls him. I love it when he sticks his head out the window and he's like, I'm back. <laughs> Oh, 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 hi, dear. Come on in. Yeah, right, right, <laughs> right. And Skylar loses it. Like, you can't do that. Like, no. How? And she's thinking, how did he get in? Because she changed all the locks. Yep. But, uh, but, Walt, <laughs> but there he is. And and Walt has got his, yeah, can I get you, you know, can I make you something? You know, uh, you know and she's playing it like nothing has changed whatsoever. And she's losing her mind and saying, I, 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 I'm going to call the cops. And he's like, phone's right there. Go right ahead. And he's thinking yeah. of all the things, all the reasons that Saul gave him for why Skylar is not going to do this. So we're starting to see Saul's probably a good poker player. He's able to Very read good the situation and know exactly what cards she has to play. He's been counting the cards, so to speak. And he knows there's no and way. Yep. Yeah. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, and, and Skylar basically enforces this idea right away. Because she keeps on doing the, if you don't do this, you know, like or else, and she doesn't follow through with it. So, so she's it, signaling that she's it not enforces. Gonna, yeah. yeah, exactly. So, so Walt is here, like, oh, <laughs> this works. You know, go ahead, call. You know, call the cops. Let's yeah. see. But in a, in a sense, he was kind of at his wit's end because he had nothing else to do. He wasn't working anymore. He didn't have his family. So like this was a good move on his part because in his mind, if he and he even says this, is like without my family, this is that's it's, it. It's nothing. Well what no what what does exactly he say? He says, I have got nothing to lose. Right. Right. Which is which is when the poker player has got one chip left and it's just enough to 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 do the ante and to buy his way in. And now he's gonna right. he's gonna play whatever cards he has and go all in because that's, that's all he's got. He's got nothing to lose, and he's dangerous in that sense. And I think he knows he has more to lose than she does. So we're we're, we're kind of you know really stretching the metaphor here. But what do we mean by that? So Walt, what does Walt have to lose if she if she um, calls the cops and he gets thrown in prison? He doesn't have his family. If he leaves, like she asked, he doesn't have his family. So that's pretty clear. But what about her? What, what, what does she have to lose? I think she spells it out with, right. with her situation with the lawyer, with her lawyer. Right. I was going to, I was going to mention that she basically gives the, the choice of, I could go through with this, call the cops, have him restraining order, all the whole nine yards. And but the lawyer advises her to do said, that. Like that's exactly what right, you need to do. Yeah. Right. If she didn't, then she would be like a Mrs. Saul Goodman type lawyer, right? Hmm. Um, but but yeah, she basically says like, "Listen, we we could just wait it out because it might just resolve itself. Why should we put Walter Jr. through this if he doesn't have to know about that?" That was a big thing. Yeah, yeah, bingo. Because I think that's it. Because even even if she has to endure some discomfort for six months, a year. I don't know, however long she thinks Walt has. It's not like her troubles are 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 over then, right? If she if she divorces him now and he dies six months later, he's out of their life either way. But Walter Jr. Right. is probably never gonna forgive her. How could you do this? Right. And that's the I think you're right. That's what she has to lose that she's not willing to uh to risk. And so when the cops right. show up and they say, ma'am, we can't remove him from the house unless you give us one thing he's done illegally, then we can, we can get him out of here right now. And you can see the agony in her mind. It's just, just kind of you know, <laughs> contemplating in herself, whether within herself, do I, do I tell her or not? You know, and she's weighing all these things. 
So it's 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 an interesting dynamic because it very much is a a poker match kind of thing. And in the end, which Walt, Walt has shown, yeah, well, Walt has well, shown that he's become better and better at at playing yeah, poker. That's right. He's and he's standing up for himself. Right. It's very different from the Walt that showed up with Walter Jr. when when Walter Jr. came over to Walt's place and he and Walt gets all, contra- you know, like, oh, oh, no, he's he came over to my place and I'm going to bring him right over. No, no, no. He knows he he can't stay with me. No, of course not. He couldn't do that. Uh, I'll come <laughs> right over. And then he brings the pizza with the dipping sticks and, Definitely you know, very sticks. Right. Trying to win her over with dipping sticks and, and cologne. You know, we see him put his cologne on like he's, he's like really going to woo her. That's not going to work. He's got to resort to what? Force, pressure. And so now he has asserted a kind of dominance. And and then the next significant thing that happens in their, that little dance between them is he says, okay, now that we've accepted basically that I'm here to stay, now I'm, I'm going to make it less awkward for you. And I'm going to tell you what I did and why I did it. And so he pushes the money out where she'll see it. Which it was, was kind of a move. power move, also because he wanted to kind of show off in one sense, like, "Hey, yeah. this, you, you've you've probably never seen a bag of money like this before. I earned right. this. I didn't steal it. it no one's look, going to come look for it. This, and then he starts like, this is his college. This is uh, Holly's college. You know, right? And right? Right? He was trying to make it all about not him, and the sacrifices that I've made will be for nothing. Therefore, this is on you now, Skyler." Like you have to uh, accept this. And if you say no, then you're the bad person. That's right. And, and then he kind of gives her an option at that point. And, and she doesn't give him an answer right away. Right. The, the, what's the, what's the, what's the, uh, what's the question? The question is, will you accept this money? And, and, and if she accepts the money, what does that mean? She's now complicit in the right. whole crime she he's asking her you have to accept because the the money he says he earned it he didn't steal it blah 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 blah. but in another sense it has blood all over it and right she and she doesn't even know money. that she's just assuming like drug right. you might have done some bad things she has no idea that a carcass fell through the, the, you know, the, floor. the tub yeah. right <laughs> right. But I'm, so that's true. But I mean, even if that even if even if they had if everything had gone the way they had originally thought it would and nobody died, it's still they still have blood on their hands because those, those drugs are, are destroying people's lives and families. And we sure. see that played out with Jane and her father and then all the people in the planes, you know, that crash. And die, right. Like so the when he says, take this money and become complicit in the guilt or you can reject it and basically we can live as people who are enduring one another in the home and and by the way i have the stronger dynamic right now the power balance is in my favor because he she can't kick him out and uh, and and she knows his secret and she can't do anything with it so that's the question are you going to accept it skylar or are you going to reject it and what does she do she well uh, now well, now that Walt knows that he says all this, and he his famous words before the IFT is, "Honesty is good." He's 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 basically given he's given a whole other type of power because now he knows that he can kind of be honest and get away with certain things because Scott mm-hmm. still mm-hmm. won't say anything. So, and it it will be interesting to see how that plays out in the next few episodes. Yeah. Well, okay. So I think so. So you just you called it right. That's exactly what what happens. Is Walt is he's living on cloud nine. He gets his family back. He's got his security. He knows that the money's there, and he's finally won. He gets the he gets both things that he wanted: his family and future financial security for them. And his son is back to being called Walt Junior. Boom. No, no longer Flynn. That's right. He doesn't just have his family. He kind of has a dominance in his family where his, his son right. is so, sort of submitting to him as, as uh, like, I'm going to be like you, dad. And, and Skylar 
we're waiting to see what Skylar's going to do, right? So then, so that I think explains the going to Ted and it's a kind of an odd thing. It, it almost seems like she hadn't thought of it until the moment she was sitting there in the break room and she kind of sees him. We know she's was yeah. the night before she's sitting in that, that scene when they're sitting in the, she's sitting in the bathroom smoking out the window mm-hmm. and Walt's asleep on the couch and poor Jesse's sleeping on the floor calling Jane and uh, it, everyone's alone in that moment. And it's really sad to just sort of, sort of see how the dynamics are right now. Everyone is, is they're not communing with one another. And they're thinking about what they're, you know, what they're going to do. And Skylar, by locking the door to the bathroom, forces Walt to take a piss in the sink, which I it's so gross. In a way, it sort of shows like she can be, she's still capable of being petty enough to make his life not miserable but annoying, right? Right. And that was just the first step of locking the bathroom door. Then she took it to a whole new level the next day. Right, right, right. So now she knows I know one way to restore the balance of power and and, mm. and and a way to hurt Walt because right now he she's he has made her powerless. And right. right now when he said without the family, the family is the whole thing. That's it for me. Something about the family for him. And so when she seduces Ted she knows she's going right at that thing that he loves. And I think in a way she's letting him know anytime I want, I can go and do that. And yeah. just, and so she's, she's restoring the balance of, of power by, by leaving it up to her to decide how much she's going to hurt him. Is this going to become an ongoing emotional affair? Was it a one-time thing? You know, it, it reminds me of when Jane, or sorry, when Walt comes to Jesse and Jane's house and he says, how do I know? And he gives her the money back and says, how do I know you're not going to tell anybody that I'm the, that the local public school chemistry teacher is also the, and she says, you never will know. Right. And, right. and there's a power play there too, where he's, he's feeling very vulnerable, right? Uh, you know, that mm-hmm. word, I think about that, that word, that word is Latin for able to be wounded, vulnerable. Like he is anytime that Jane wanted to, she could wound him. And anytime that Skylar wants to, she can wound him. But yeah, and she definitely in, enjoyed it a little bit though. To, she definitely enjoyed it a little bit because like she wanted to see Walt angry mm. because of what she did to him. I mean, you see yeah. it in his face and he just goes, she just, she just takes his food, goes sits at the table and it's like, Hey, you know, Make sure you eat your vegetables, boys. <laughs> yeah, I think in a way that, yeah, that's interesting, right? What she's doing is this, she's saying, you know what? I'm just going to pretend like it's not a big deal. In the same way that he wants her to be like, hey, I manufacture meth. What's the big deal? <laughs> yeah. You said it though. The whole, the whole, the, the petty play from both sides is so high yeah. school level that you would yeah. think that it wouldn't be at this type of of uh of age right. but it it's definitely showing itself even at this <laughs> this area yeah well and it and it also shows that that they've destroyed their family already they're no longer going to be husband and wife they're going to be partners who have degrees of leverage over each other right i don't know how the, if they can overcome that and I, I, I don't know if, if has Skylar answered the question whether she's going to take the money. Maybe, she, maybe that, maybe that she hasn't even answered that yet. She has just first reestablished the balance, and now probably in the next episode we're going to see her answer to that question. Is she going to, is she going to become complicit in the in the, the drug trade as well or not? But right now, all we know is that the balance of power was was restored. Right. Okay, let's let's talk about Hank real fast. So he gets word that he's get, he got this opportunity to go back to El Paso, and when he and and uh, his and Gomi when they go to that bar, are they celebrating? No, his, it was a promotion, um, or 
I don't think so. Well, it, it could be, but I, I know that they kind of go back and forth. It's it's your turn to buy. It's your turn to buy. Right. Just like lunch. Right. It seemed like and that bar they were at Hank's though, turn. was an unusual one, not one they normally go to. It was. Yeah. Gomi even says that. Like, what did I did did I do something? Why are we eating here? <laughs> oh, right, right. Aha. Uh-huh. Okay, that's helpful. So that means that Hank picked that bar on purpose. Correct. He knew that there that'd be a place where he could let some emotion out. He just was, so, that's I mean, what he was looking the, for the, the whole time. Well, right. So that's the question. Did he plan the entire thing? We know that he planned some of it insofar as he goes back to his car and he leaves his gun under the seat. So why would he why would he do that? Why would he orchestrate this even to that degree? What is yeah, he there, there's that? there's two th- ways of thinking of this. One is he just needed to let some emotion out because of the whole thing of going back to El Paso. He never fit in there. He was no longer the top dog there. He doesn't know Spanish. That's but that's also where all the top DA agents go to. That's where you want to go to if you want to go to the next level. But he never fit in there. And he also has some PTSD from the Tortuga explosion. And yeah, the, 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 that whole was he doing it so that he would get in trouble just enough to not be considered anymore, or was he just trying to let out some emotion? Yeah, that's the question. But I guess we'll find it, but it's out in the next couple episodes. Yeah, and interesting to note that that he might want to sabotage the whole thing himself. But it, well, I mean, he's not, in- he's not he's not a guy that's going to come down and just say no. Yeah, he can't, right? He's, he's, he's too tank. He's too prideful. Right. But you know, even when he gets the call, I didn't detect a whiff of, oh my gosh, I really don't want this, but oh my gosh, I have to look like I do. He seemed genuinely happy the whole time. And maybe he was. Maybe he wants to be picked, but he just wants to be able to have an excuse to say, Oh, I'm so sorry. No. And so See, his, I think he was putting joy... on, uh, a face. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Well, it's a, it's an interesting problem uh, that I, I guess will be resolved in the next episode or a future episode. But but the right. fact that he leaves his gun in the car is really important, I think, because it means that he's willing to accept the risk that he could get killed. Because that's his trump card in any kind of confrontation, right? Before it gets violent, the point is not well, fight them, and then if it looks like you're going to lose, then you reach for your gun. No, no, no. You don't let it get to the situation where it could go one way or the other. You get knocked out, and then they could they could really hurt you. You pull the gun first thing before, you know, when you know that there's a potential for violence in order to stop the violence from ha- ever happening. So he, he wants the violence to some degree, and he's willing to accept that risk. Of you know this could this could really not go well for me, but it it shows more about how confident he is in his own power physically. Sure, they were big guys too. Yeah, and he and he does it in such a way where he's asking them basically to uh, to fight him. So yeah, more reason to move. think that he he was orchestrating <laughs> that that whole thing. All right, there's not really much to say about Jesse, poor guy. Like I said, he's just very pathetic in both senses of that term meaning that he's he's suffering a lot uh but that he's also just looks kind of losery uh he, he's not performing well as a human being and when saul comes yeah. over and says hey i really need you to get your partner back into the mess manufacturing saul adds to that by saying hey you know he's the maestro he's the guy with all the talent you're just the guy who can get to him. You don't really bring anything to this game. <laughs> that that had to have been even more demoralizing, I think, for Jesse. True, but old Jesse, pre-rehab Jesse, would have lashed out and gone crazy and said, like, you know, hell no, man. Like, I'm, I'm 50-50 in this. But he didn't. He responded pretty calmly and was like, all right, you know, actually, I forget what he says. Did he say, did he say he was going to uh, speak to Walt for him? Yeah. He said, I'll take care of it. Will you leave please? Yeah. 
Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's but, what it was. But he said it in such a way that I wouldn't, if I were Saul, I wouldn't believe yeah. that Jesse was actually going to do that. This is a guy who doesn't, he's known for not following through. He's not dependable. You don't want to depend on right. Jesse. Okay. Well, I think that's uh, w- maybe one last thing to note about this episode is when, with Walt and Skyler, when Walt says, the things I have had to do for the, to get this money, he says, I will have to live with them. We know that he's replaying all of the things, and we have probably assumed Skyler is like, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. <laughs> but I bring it up because w- w- Walt says he's re- wanting her to think, yeah, look, I had to do these things, but I'm going to have to live with the consequences of them. But what's patently clear is that, no, 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 Walt, they're all going to have to live with them. Everyone around you is going to have to live with the consequences of what you did to get that money. And he seemed right. oblivious to that. Oh, he's 100%. Still in his mind. It's all me, 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 me. Right. But he's got, this, he's got this dichotomy in his mind where he can go and do the, the meth stuff and then come back and it's just normal home family stuff. Right? Right. He's not, he's not thinking of, you know, 10 feet in front of him. He's just thinking of right now. How do I fix right now? He's not yeah. thinking about the collateral damage it's going to cause. Right. Yeah. And then, then we end with the, uh, the IFP and uh, on, on to the next episode, right? That's it. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please like, share, and subscribe. You can find these episodes on Apple Podcast and YouTube. And you can follow and contact us on Twitter at, and Patreon at Breaking Into BB. We will see you next time as we break into another episode of Breaking Bad. (laughs) 